Here we're just going to take you through some really awesome techniques around how you can lay out multiple variables on top of one another within uh, measures. You can bring in variables that sit outside your data model and then you can run scenarios or what if analysis on multiple different variables. It doesn't have to be just one. And that's why I call it multi-layered multi scenario analysis. Because if you think about if we're in an environment of sales, if I come to just the table here, our sales ultimately can be determined by a number of things. They can be determined by the price at which we sell the product. They can also be determined by the demand for our product. Will, does the demand go up? Does it? Will it go down? They can also be determined. Our profits can be determined by the costs of our uh, of, of our products. So, so we've got a few different things that we can we can shock. You know, we can shock in our analysis that would enable us to almost predict, almost predict based on those. Uh, variables that we input what will eventuate in the future and that's really powerful stuff it's almost like predictive analysis but it's it's not you know, a complex algorithm it's just substituting in variables to see what the outcome will be much makes a lot more um, you know sense in my opinion to, to keep it as simple as that now power bi enables you to do this so effectively it's it's actually quite amazing how how effectively you can do this in power bi now i've already set it up just to save time but as an example of what i have done all i have done is i have gone and created three additional tables called supporting tables one for price changes one for cost changes and one for demand changes and we are going to use the columns in these tables which look like so so here we've got price changes so we've just got um, prices moving up we will be able to select well do we want to increase the price by five percent ten percent fifteen percent etc same for demand I created this table very simply uh, and also for cost changes another another um, another adjustment there so what we're going to do is we're going to use these as slices these tables like so create slices and then via that selection we can then say well uh, we can then bring this calculation this measure that we have created into our analysis now it's all exactly the same pattern to create these and if you've reviewed uh, some of the other videos on enterprise dna tv you would have seen the technique uh, used a, a number of times but simply it is uh, if has one value percentage cost change so if one of these is selected then actually return in this case we've just used min you could use um, you could use average or sum uh, but if, if it is one value then actually return the result we have selected if not make it equal to zero percent so if nothing is selected then that is suggesting that it, there is a zero change to costs now think about this scenario occasionally your costs are going to rise your raw materials may increase and to counter that increase you may want to increase the price but then you may also have some demand changes because there is um, not the, not going to be the you know, demand for your product because mo less people are going to be able to afford it due to those price uh, price changes. So we're going to, I'm going to show you how you can incorporate all of these measures that we have just created into your calculations. Now there's a couple of considerations. The first one I want to showcase here. If you think about this this calculation here it does what we need it gives us total sales we can then calculate total costs and then work out total profits the issue is is that this does not enable you to incorporate any variables in what goes into total revenue and to reiterate that point if I go to sales what makes up total revenue well it's quantity times the unit price so if you just sum up total quantity, you can't in, uh, incorporate the demand variable, which would increase the quantity, or the price increase variable, which would increase the unit price. So what we have to do is we have to use iterators here. So I'm going to change this into a sum x so that I can break out those individual pieces that bring that come together for total revenue and make changes. So I'm going to just go sales here, and then I'm just going to go quantity times the order 
uh, the, the, the price, the unit price. So this is just an example of what you have to do to be able to, you have to use iterators to be able to incorporate these things. Okay, now we're gonna work on the formula, which is gonna give us scenario profits. And we're gonna work along those lines that uh, we just did regarding the iterating function. But we're gonna do, do create total sales and total costs with these scenarios incorporated in one measure. So I'm just gonna go equals here, I'm gonna go down to a new line and I'm gonna go sum x, and we're gonna write our total sales with the scenarios here. And I'm gonna go sales, and then I'm gonna go order quantity, but in this case, I'm gonna actually times it by one plus the demand change. So that's gonna shock the quantity up if demand changes, which, which is exactly what we need. I'm just gonna bring this down to another line as well. And then we need to times this by the unit price times by one plus the price change. So the scenario price change. So we don't need these table names in here either, so I'm just gonna get rid of those. So now we have our total sales, but it can be shocked by changes in price and changes in demand. So we've incorporated these two, uh, these two measures in here. But now we need to do costs. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna minus my costs and I'm going to go sum x again and say go to the sales table. And then I'm gonna write the logic very similar. I'm gonna go order quantity, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna times this by the demand change, uh, one plus the demand change, because obviously our costs are going to increase if demand increases because we're gonna produce more. And then I'm gonna go uh, plus demand, demand change. And then here I'm gonna times this one by, instead of the unit price, I'm gonna go total unit cost and you should, you'll probably know what to do now. And then I go one plus the percentage cost change, like so. And I just close that off and then I'm just gonna get rid of these tables. Now, this is going to give us the scenario profits now, but incorporating these variables. Now to double check this, what we can do is we can, we can, we can just create a table and if I drag this inside of here and I'm gonna grab the month and year, and it's only gonna show up for 2016 because that's what I got filtered, but if we select nothing here, if nothing is selected, check this out, if nothing is selected, this is gonna be the total profits for 2016. But if we now need to, uh, if, if our raw material cost increases, we wanna increase it, it increases by 10%, we can increase that by 10%. And to counter that, we may want to increase our price by 15%. And then to counter that again, demand might reduce and we might want to say, well, demand might, might in this case, reduce by 5%. And you see all those scenarios uh, that we're adding to, we're layering on, are changing the scenario profits. And that's because they're all being fed into this iterating function as we select them. So I'm gonna stop there. That's uh, just an introduction to uh, how you can create this, this multi-layered effect of scenario analysis and, uh, and, and certainly watch out for some further videos where we bring in a bit more complexity in here and how we might want to shock individual dimensions, say we might want to increase uh, the price in only a particular product set or for a particular region, uh, so on and so forth. So some pretty exciting stuff that you can, uh, you can evolve into with this sort of technique.